Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to NJBW Puro Rest Review. I am your co host, Andrew C. Right over here, it's the Smurf Princess herself. It's Melba. How you doing, Melba? I'm going to not make that joke. Not make that joke and take the compliment. Yes, lips are shiny blue today. It's, we'll say I'm Smurfette. Hey, that might not be a good thing for me. You're just you're blue and tiny. That's what you are. You're you're you're, you're blue and tiny. And the you're, only you're... girl in the town. <laughs> oh, oh uh, I am doing great, Andre. You know what I did today? Was that was that? I did a back day. Ooh. Mm. It felt so good. Because it was the first time in a very long time that I've been able to do anything in the gym without physical freaking pain. Nice. Victory. We will take it. How are Victory. you doing, my friend? I'm doing pretty good. I got a workout in today too. Uh, this morning, went and dropped some, took some bottles to the bottle depot, got some groceries, made some spaghetti for supper. You know, it's a good day. Sounds like a good day. It was. I had beef and rice for for mm, dinner. Yummy. Yeah. You, yeah you've had you've well, had my spaghetti myself. sauce. You know it's good. It is good. It is tasty. There you go. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's been a good day. It's been a good day. Mm -hmm. Good Monday. Good, a good Monday as it happens, but Mondays are my Sundays. So, yeah. You know, I've always had a pretty good relationship with Mondays. It's Tuesdays that are a little... We're iffy. We have a rocky relationship, us, on Tuesdays. Well, Tuesdays are my Mondays now, so... <laughs> That's probably why you dislike them. Ah, every day is... It's just, just another day down towards before it's the next weekend is what it is. Fair enough. Fair enough. Because that means more wrestling. Typically. Yeah, more wrestling. So as we record this, we are three days away from, from Andre month. <laughs> it, it start, that starts on August 1st because an Andre day on August 10th. We're, we're getting that much closer. So A little bit, a little bit, inch by inch. <laughs> I love that uh, you gave me so much shit when I was like, I want a month. Here I am, um, just letting you live your best life. Uh, the only the only day I'm going to celebrate really is on August 9th because I'm going to be hanging out with you guys the day before my birthday. So that's when I'm going to. That's when I'm the only day I'm really going to celebrate this month. That's <laughs> true. That's true. Top talent. We're going to have some fun. Yes, we are. But we're not here to talk top talent. We're not here to talk about mm -hmm. my birthday month. We're here to talk about New Japan Pro Wrestling. Before yeah. we do that, I want to thank each and every one of you guys. Uh, thank you so much for ch for checking us out, whether it's on Andre Melvar and Talk, whether it's Bound um, Backbreaker Video. Thank you so, so very much for joining us here. Um, you can please like the video, subscribe to the channel, comment down below. Please sh share us out to all your friends, family, uh, all those just conflicted people in your life that are just trying to figure out all these weird things in this world. Don't forget to share us out to them. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so you can be alerted every time we drop a new video. Ding dong. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> Sounded like Dino there, didn't I? <laughs> wow. A Flintstone no. reference. Well, I okay. know, right? We Somebody, just dated ourselves. Somebody's old. <gasps> you. You're older than me. <laughs> hey, but I'm I'm still a young felt. According to some, I'm still a young felt thirty six. So, <laughs> do mm. I look it according to some though? No, oh, definitely not. Hateable. <laughs> definitely, definitely not. Definitely, definitely not. <laughs> so we're going to talk first. about the G1 Climax Days 3 and 4. Again, same format as last time. We each picked two matches from uh, each night. We're going to get in-depth on those. The rest, we're just going to give you the fin you know, have a quick chat and the finishes about those. I should adjust my screen a little better so I can read my notes. <laughs> that would probably help us, yes. That might help me. So just let's get in. Let's get into it. Uh, night one, we're kicking it off with my pick. It is Jeff Cobb versus Kanosuke Takeshita. Again, this match was fire from the hop. The two just smashing into each other. Again, two big dudes just smacking the crap out of each other. Uh, Cobb tries to suplex Takeshita on the apron. 
but he slips down the ring and hits his hard forearm sitting cover the floor. And it's a beautiful top a gun he low to Cobb on the floor. Uh, Cobb drop kicks to Kesha when he's up on the top rope in the back of the ring. He climbs up and hits this beautiful super gut wrench suplex for two. Then he gets up and hits that standing moonsault for two. Uh, Cobb is just it's unfair. It's not fair. It's not fair. He's so good. Yeah. Uh, then uh, later in the match, Takesha flips through a German, lands on his feet, hits a beautiful poison run about Cobb, comes back with a huge lariat. Both men are down. Takesha ducks the lariat, hits a huge bridging German, but he only gets two. He goes for up the power drive knee, but is caught into a spin cycle. And then Cobb hitting him the Hanare special, the rampage um, here. Uh, and then uh, drops a huge forearm down on on Takesha's face for t- and gets a two. Uh, t- later in the match, Cobb goes for the blue thunder bomb, but Cobb reverses it into a r- her and Ken Rana. But Takesha comes back hitting a blue thunder bomb, but Cobb kicks out that 2.9. They start trading hard knees to the face, like jumping knees, just look crazy. Cobb hits a head, but Takesha with a hard forearm to the face and hits the raging fire falcon arrow. For the win. Man, this was incredibly good. Yeah, yeah. Big meaty men slapping meat. Mm-hmm. But a lot of power moves, a lot of like what I would consider more traditional kind of power wrestling. These guys just took it to each other. But then you got Cobb and that just unnatural, it's not fair athleticism that he has where it's just like a man that size shouldn't be able to do that. Mm. It's crazy the things he can do. But yeah, good choice. Good choice. I mean, obviously. That poison Rana that Takeshka does. And I ask because I don't I'm not a regular AEW watcher and I've only recently started watching DDT. Um is the poison Rana something that he usually does? Mm-hmm. That is part of his Signature moveset? It's a signature set in AEW, for sure, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's obvious. The just sheer volume of perfection that he does them with, and I've seen this throughout this entire tournament now, is just so good. The the talent that he has and the size. How how tall is he again? I keep hearing it, but I keep forgetting the number. 6'3"? Six, three? Like 6'3", six, 6'4", six, somewhere. Yusuji's like 6'1", six, 6'2". Six, and like even re- really think about it, that's not even crazy tall, right? Like you think isn't the it, I it, am five foot three. That is tall to me. Oh yeah, it's a full foot over you, and it's like I'm only five eight. I'm like I'm barely five eight. Like just the I'm on that just touching five eight. And I feel like that's the average height of men in North America. And I'm like six inches shorter than or eight inches shorter than this man in Takeshta. It's crazy. Like it's it very crazy. crazy. Yeah, it is so so crazy. Like, ha- yeah, okay. and then and then Cobb just the build that man has to do what he does in that ring. It's just absolutely amazing. As Kevin Kelly always used to say, it's not fair. It's just to do a standing fair. moonsault. Like I'm flexible. I can do a bridge no problem. But you just asked me to do a freaking standing moonsault. I would end up breaking everything. Everything, mm-hmm. like my back, my face, my arms, my neck, everything. Well, even his drop kick when he he drop kicked Takeshita while Takeshita was on the top was sitting on the top rope on sitting up top. Cobb mm-hmm. drop kicked him in the midsection. That man was drop kicking his, over his head, his own head. He was drop kicking over his own head. I mean, look at his legs, though. Those things are, they might be, you know, a little short, but those things are just pure freaking power. I mean, again, standing moonsault, the ability to jump to the top row, over the top rope to drop kick to Kashka. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That the strength that Cobb has it compact in him is just unreal. Yeah, it's crazy. And just like he's got rockets for legs. It's literally what it's got to be. It's, it's like, like Kevin Knight, it's, there's springs. With him, it's rockets. It's got to be. It's got to be. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. So we move on. Second, uh, that was in the B block BT dubs. That was the B block match that didn't happen Correct. on night two. 
So uh, before we talk about this next match, uh, B Block update. It is now has Hinare and Yuyumura in first with uh, four points. Then you mm-hmm. have, uh, oh, sorry, also, uh, yeah, with uh, four with four points. Then you have Takeshita with, uh, oh, sorry, Takeshita also with four points. Uh, Cobb, Oleg, Narita, Suji, all with two points. And then you have Fantasmo, Goto, and Finley with uh, zero points. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah. Coolio. In, in that, in the, in, in the B block. So just quick point mm-hmm. update. So we go back into the A block now, and we're going to talk about uh, Zach Saber Jr. versus Callum Newman. I, like this, I was so excited for this match. This was my second pick, but I, I went with the opener because just it, it just hit me that much more because of the craziness of it. This match mm-hmm. was absolutely incredible. The end of this match, each man is reversing the finisher to the other. Newman gets an octopus hold on Zack Sabre Jr. That if you noticed, he waited about six, seven seconds and then transitioned into the code red for two. So the man knows that Sabre is going to be able to get out within a few se- within that time frame. So he's he's, he's shifting too. And Newman mm-hmm. gets a code red for two. Uh, Sabre... Uh, Newman goes for a powerbomb, but Saber pulls a triangle. Newman lifts him up and still hits him with the powerbomb out of the triangle for two. But then Saber grabs the arm in the triangle again, and then he reaches over while holding the triangle on the head and arm, grabs the leg, pulls it in for a heel hook. I'm thinking, oh, is he going to go orienteering? One of his old finishes where he would pull all multiple limbs, which is called orienteering with napalm death. But no, uh, he gets the heel hook in, and Newman taps. Or it, it, it's it's over, and mm-hmm. oh, I don't know if it was a physical tap or it was a verbal tap. But man, he 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 was done when he, when when Saber got the leg. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure how it ended either. And I watched this match a couple times. Um, just the camera was just not in a place where we could really uh, see officially, kind of for for me anyway, how it ended. Um, but this was actually a really fun match. This was also my second pick um, mm-hmm. for, for the show, just because of how good it was. And I feel it was, um, first of all, chemistry, perfect chemistry mix between these two guys. You got two sassy pants. You know, Cal Newman has been focused, but you, he, he's, he has a tendency to be a little sassy, as Zack Sabre Jr. is just 24-7 sassy pants. Mm. So to, to see these two guys get in there and work each other was really, really fun for me. Um, there's this um, sequence that Callum has become quite efficient at doing where he's, he feeds a number of strikes. And um, when he is knocked down, he kips back up. Um, and, and feeds a few more. I really, really like how he does that. It really shows his resiliency, but also mm-hmm. shows his, um, you know, adaptivity. Just goes down, gets right back up instantaneously. Can't keep this guy down. Yeah. Um, there was also one point where um, after a kip up, he fell um, into a pin on Zack Sabre Jr. after a high kick when they were just so exhausted uh, towards the end of this match. Um, I also felt that uh, Newman showed off his ability to defend against technical and submission style wrestling in this one, while not always being a strong technician or submission guy himself, he really did show his ability to defend against it and still remain um, in contention. He might have taken a loss on this, but he lasted a lot longer than I would have expected somebody Mm -hmm. in their first G1 against Zack Sabre Jr. I was really, really, really impressed with this match. The fact that he went toe-to-toe with Sabre in some of those technical exchanges was absolutely tremendous. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I felt that Sabre Jr. also reciprocated in matching Callum and strikes. Mm -hmm, uh, 100%. Yeah, so it was just a very good back-and-forth match. Like I said, this was also my my second choice of of match of the night. Mm -hmm. So we move on to... Another A block match. It is Shingo Takagi versus the Great O Khan. Uh, really good match again. Khan, you working to a more of a strike and lariat style match here, working kind of trying to emulate, but I think he's gonna have to drop the emulating and just be him soon enough. Or he's it's not this tournament is not gonna turn out well for him. Uh, because so far, him trying to emulate people has not 
been good for him. Let's just say that. Um, end of this match comes. Shingo reverses the Eliminator into a DDT. Uh, Khan goes for another Eliminator, but it gets reversed into a Snapdragon. Shingo hits a sliding Larry, but only gets one. Khan going for the Eliminator again, but gets reversed. Shingo hits a pumping bom bomber and gets a cradle pin for the win, which really surprised me in how they finish this, but I really liked it. I like mm -hmm. seeing these matches where somebody gets a win off of something they don't normally win off of. I agree. I agree. And for these two and the evolution in their feud, I felt that it was actually a really, really great way to help evolve because these guys have been pretty defiant and dominant in their pinning of each other, especially when we were seeing them battle for that KOPW title. Mm -hmm. Or not them. It was Tai Chi, wasn't it? No, these two battled for it too. It was Tai. Oh. It was all three men had like variations together would like whoever was holding the title yeah. was trying to do. Yeah, I felt last year, right, 2023 kind of mm. run with that title. Um, the only other thing I wanted to mention in here is that I noticed uh, Shingo doing the sword hammer. Mm. And it was good. It wasn't this little binkity binkity thing. Yeah. It wasn't it wasn't a Yoshi Hashi where it was a sword mallet. It was a or, full sword hammer. I love it. Or it wasn't a uh, a butter My, knife, a butter nice knife. Spoon. Knifey spoony. A, it was not a butter knife spoon like uh Tangelo has been doing. But. Oh yeah. I don't know. I don't know what to tell you guys. If you watch that product, I mean he was pretty decent here. Uh, I don't know what we sent you. There's a few I, of those sword hammers decent. that are pretty rough. There's a few of those sword hammers that even in here were pretty rough. So yeah, I'm not gonna lie. I I like I said, for the most part. We 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 had we had the best of Tongaloa. I'm sorry, you're kind of getting the. I think the, I think the best thing uh, the best thing for him was the fact that he was hidden. So he it, it, him and his brother's tag team kind of was actually the best thing for him is that he didn't have to work a whole match because his singles run was not bad but not great in New Japan. So we're not even gonna say it was good. It was it was it was rough. It was yeah. rough. Yeah, but yeah, it was nice to see the sword hammer still alive. Very much so. So we move on to Melball's pick. It is yes. Gabe Kid versus Oof. Shota Um another talk. Oh, and like ELP on commentary was absolutely phenomenal on this show. I think he gave yes. such backstory and knowing a lot of these guys, especially like Kid and Umino, who he worked with at in LA when he would work out at the dojo there. Again, like shout out ELP. We love yeah. you here. He did a great job. Uh, so, the, yeah, a lot of history here from these two, from the LA Dojo training together, uh, coming mm -hmm. up there together. Um, a kid ends up stopping this, the final beat DDT, the over-the-top rope uh, DDT, into the ring. And he ends up biting the forehead at Umino. And then he hits a backdrop suplex and then chops Umino. It's like choking him in the corner. Just but the, the utter rage was amazing. Um yes. Showed a uh, uh, they're, they're, uh, later in the match. I'm only gonna go through a few things here. They, they're later in the match. They're, they're they're striking each other on their knees. They fight up to their feet at center. Kid drops Umino with this beautiful lariat, but only gets one. Then Umino comes back with an exploder uh, into another exploder, and then Kid hits a lariat, and then into Umino hitting a snapdragon, and then hits a, a rolling form. But this, the kid kicks out of two just incredible sequences with these two. Mm -hmm. And then we, we get down to the end of the match. And both men are reversing everything the other had. Just reversal, reversal, reversal. Kid gets him in the pile driver, drops him. But Umino kicks out of that 2.9999. Like, just barely survives. Uh, so Kid falls up with this hard elbow to the face of Umino. And he gets that this, like, li like lion tamer... Like Chris Jericho said, lion, like old school Jericho lion tamer on, and the angle, and he's just like wrenching down on it. Then he lets it go and just gets a gut, like a gut wrench power bomb for the win, which I was just like, yes, let's go. Again, another yeah. different finish, which I liked. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What I loved about this and what I've loved about Gabe Kidd's run in the G1 so far is almost every match we're seeing a different kind and style of Gabe Kidd. He 
changes himself, alters himself to match whoever he's fighting. And he, we knew this was going to be an intense battle with Shota. And man, did he come out intense. He wasn't beacon to the crowd like he usually was. He was actually pretty focused, pretty intensified on Shota Umino. He didn't take his eyes off of him from the moment he was at ringside, the moment he was in the ring. It was oddly and scarily enough the calmest we have seen Gabe Kidd when he comes through those curtains. And now we realize that that's something we need to fear about this man. We don't need to fear him coming out hyped up, throwing things around, throwing the children, throwing whatever. We need to worry about Gabe Kidd who comes out who's not acting like Gabe Kidd. He was war ready for this match. Holy shit. Um, this was a very strong style match for me. Um, very much UK strong style. There was um, a lot more strikes and heavy, heavy strikes. European uppercuts galore. And both these men, tremendous at them. Um, yeah, Kid putting uh, Umino in the Boston Crab was just a big middle finger, <laughs> essentially, to Umino. <laughs> Um, yeah, the chemistry these two men had was just palatable. It was insane how good these two mixed. And this was actually, for me, the best that I felt about Umino in a while. I've been pretty hard on him since coming back because he wasn't really emulating anybody, but or when he was emulating everybody but himself. And now we're starting to finally see the development of who it is that Shota Umino is going to be. I do wish, though, that he was at 100% for this match. Mm -hmm. Because as good as this match was, could you imagine how much better it would have been? Which is hard to imagine if Shota Umino was legitimately at 100%. Because he says he's at 100%. But but we know. Is he really? Yeah, like, are we though? But man, oh man, oh man, have we been sleeping on Gabe Kidd? I mean, I've been a fan of this guy since I saw him, since before he joined the War Dogs. I knew he was a great talent, but we weren't seeing, I think, the potential of what it was that he was capable of doing. Putting him on the War Dogs and just sicking him loose on the wrestling world has been the absolute best thing not just for the war dogs but for gabe kid because now we get this feral unhinged insanity that can be toned down or up depending on who he's facing and mm -hmm. he has banger after banger after banger after banger like i am so impressed with his g1 run i'm kind of wishing i picked him to, to take it because man oh man my yep. pick ain't doing so hot <laughs> yeah I'm getting kented my pick's doing great so far <laughs> of everything I've watched so you don't relate mm -hmm. <sighs> uh, yeah, anything else on this one or are we good no just this was great this was freaking great. If you want a great representation of strong style wrestling, particularly UK strong style, but Zynga. We move on to Sonata versus Evil, Battle of the Former Tag Team Partners in Melbourne. Do you want to explain to everybody the opening part of the, the pre-match shenanigans? Oh, yeah. Um... I didn't write it down, so I'm going to go best to my memory. There was a, a talking to happening between Togo and Evil and Mr. Sonata there, where they had thought that they had convinced Sonata to join House of Torture. He put on the House of Torture shirt and everything. It looked atrocious on him. You know, it was, it was a sad day. It was a sad day. We cried a little. We didn't cry a little because I didn't. <laughs> you know, it could have been a good thing though. Mm -hmm. what, could maybe you imagine? Brought some charisma out in the guy. <laughs> he brought it out in Luke Perry. They brought it out in Ren Rita. Luke Perry. Oh, but, um, the Perry thing. 
Jack Perry, come on. The the child Perry. Yeah, child. <laughs> we'll call them child Perry. Sorry, Mr. Mr. Luke, R.I.P. Dearly yeah. beloved. <laughs> So no Sonata and House of Torture. So no. the end of this match comes. A lot of ref. The ref get t- got taken out. Uh, evil hits darkness. Falls for two. Sonata stops everything is evil and gets evil up onto the ropes. Hits a magic screw. He kips up. Hits the rounding body press, but can only get two. Uh, evil stops deadfall, but Sonata stops everything is e- evil into everything is Sonata and hits a plancha to Togo on the floor. He comes back in shining wizard. But Evil ends up tossing the ref into uh, Sonata and uh, gets the low a blow on Sonata. And I have to say, the move that he hit, I know it as the parachute of, in the, of uh, local independent wrestler Chris Parrish's finisher right here, where he grabbed the face and he drives it into the ground and he gets the win. Yeah, went over the parachute. Yeah. Yeah. I was I was I was like, what? That's not his finish? This was a night of winning with not your finish. Right? Yeah. It was very interesting. Has it like they've kind of been doing that? I, I don't mind it. I actually really enjoy it. It's just odd that it's all happening on one night. Spread that ish out. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have a whole lot to say on this after the shenanigans at the beginning were, were the most interesting part to me. Mm-hmm. Um, Evil has been a really odd duck for me in the G1 because his matches aren't as horrible as they usually are, which is improvement for me. Uh, yeah. It's odd that I don't have anything bad to say about Evil. Because mm-hmm. there, there was never there other, like... There wasn't anything insanely offensive with this match, though. It just wasn't yeah. anything. It was a just. It was a fine match between the two, is what it was. Yeah, it was. It was. It wasn't even like a grudge match, which I would expect these two to to potentially, you know, have given their history. It was just a straight up good wrestling match with some shenanigans, and not even like horrible shenanigans. They were shenanigans that made sense. Gato's yeah. fixing it. Yeah. I, I don't know. Just yeah. We move on main event of the evening. In it is a te- the champion Tetsuya Naito versus uh Jake Lee from the War Dogs. Mm-hmm. I this wasn't a bad match, but it just felt like it never hit that next gear. Like it, it, they ramped it like up from first. Into second, got it into third, but then we're trying to rev up to get up to another gear, but just never got quite got there for me personally in this match. I don't know what it was. It was a good match. Nothing wrong with it. Just yeah, for me, this is the second time I've seen these two in a one-on-one capacity, mm. and it just didn't quite reach the same pinnacle that it reached the first time for me hmm. that being said like i i enjoyed it it was a little yeah. scary because naito was really getting his butt kicked throughout a lot of it lee was very very dominant hmm. throughout most of this match to see the iwgb world champion kind of being turned into a ranked all so much was very very concerning but yeah, you're you're absolutely right. There was a certain level that just wasn't okay. reached. Yeah, yeah. They, they were having problems shifting gears. Yeah. So I'm gonna get to the end here. Naito mm. gets out of a choke slam, he hits a kick to the head, he gets a running Destino, but doesn't quite get it all. Um Naito puts Lee up top, but Lee slips out, but Naito gets out of the power bomb, but Lee hits him with strikes, it's a backdrop suplex. He gets Naito on the corner, goes for the face break shot, but he misses. Naito hits forearms at center, uh, then the Insiguri, but Lee comes back with with shots and a, ki- and a kick to the head. He goes for the choke slam, but Naito reverses it into a kind of like half Destino and gets mm-hmm. the win. And yeah, the Destino was, was weird. 
And I was just like, oh, <laughs> usually when he hits that like half destino, he never wins off of it. And I was like, oh, okay. Um, yeah, that it's part of the fin it was the way the finish ended. I'm like, oh, okay. But again, yeah. And then Lee is just pissed as he's leaving. Like he is pissed. I mean, understandable. Yeah. Understandable. Um, it's been very fun to watch Jake Lee in this tournament, though, because there are some people that he just walks all over. And then there's some people like Naito where he just struggles after he's walked all over them. It's very interesting to see the dynamic. That being said, I mean, appropriate name, smart bastard. He is pretty smart. He wasn't so smart against evil, but no. like, you know, it was two brain cells. Well, not two brain cells. Maybe evil just had the one. And Toko let him have it. I don't know. But um, yeah. A very interesting main event. Very interesting way to end it. Um, hmm. But yeah, don't have anything else to say on this one. So yeah, so A block after night three, you have Sa uh, Zack Sabre Jr. and Evil on top with six points each, three and zero. Oh. Then you have Takagi and Gabe Kid each with four points. Then you have Jake Lee, Cal Newman, Sonata, Shota Umino, to and Tetsuya Naito all with two points, and then Great Okan with his trying to match his opponents stuff. With zero points in last place. It's just like, maybe you have to change up that game plan and start do, just doing your own thing, bro. Yeah, please. Yeah. Please. <laughs> so we move on to night number four. Uh, we go to we kick it off with Hiroki Goto, the oldest man in the block, taking on Bolt and Oleg, the least experienced man in the block. Let's say that because he's not the youngest, that's for sure. Um, Bolton using his size just, and just ragdoll and Goto around in this match. It's really what the story of this was, was Goto trying to fight back to Bolton Oleg's size. Um, mm -hmm. Then the, towards the end of this match, Bolton with the singer splash and the Bolton bomb, which is also known as the Vader bomb for two. Uh, Bolton gets him up, but Goto slips uh, uh, off the shoulders into the sleeper, getting Bolton down. But Bolton catches the kick, gets Goto up, and hits a Miramare shock for it. Two. Uh, Goto slips out of the kamikaze into the rear naked choke and gets him into a crucifix pair pin for two. Goto hits a huge headbutt, dropping Bolton and hits him with a PK, follows it up with a GTR for the win. Yeah. Big boy Bolton. Yeah, as you've said, really yeeting around um, Goto in this one quite a bit. Um, I was really concerned. I was like, wow, I think uh, Bolton's going to pick up a win over him. But that experience of Goto just freaking came out of nowhere and, and put Bolton down. I Like I said, I thought Bolton was going to steamroll right through Goto, especially the way he was just tossing him. And then the way he was able to just kind of always be ready just kind of almost creeping around him just ready to pounce on him that amateur background that bolton has really really helpful in this g1 um yeah i don't have a whole lot to, to add to this one this was a really fun way to kick off the block yeah again really again strong opener to the show I, i'm really mm -hmm. I'm, getting, I'm more and more impressed with everything bolton's doing and just being able to hang with these guys we're just consummate pros and he's able to just look he looks like a million bucks in there man he really does he does he does especially with that new gear mm -hmm. that whole new look mm -hmm. the new music yes graduated yep yes so we move on to my runner-up match of the night jeff cobb versus ren narita because it like ren narita has been having this great performance runner up too ren narita's been having insanely great performances in this tournament i i'm insanely impressed with this dude he, yeah. he has a bit of his cheating stuff, but he doesn't. It's not as much as evil, and it's all on his own. Like he's doing yeah. all of his own cheating for himself. Uh, so we get to the end of this match, and Rita uh, goes to the top, but misses Cobb, uh, misses off the top. Um, and Cobb hits a straight right, just dropping Narita. Uh, but Narita comes back, kicking up the knee, but Cobb comes back, gets it on his shoulders, hits an F5000 for a two count. Narita grabs the ref, try stopping tour of the islands, and he ends up running Cobb into the ref. Cobb 
uh, stops the push up bar attack and tosses Narita away. And he has the push up bar. He goes to attack Narita with it, but Marty is saw Narita throws Marty saw me in the way. Marty takes the push up bar, goes to the corner. Narita gets the low blow, kick to the head, and the double cross for the win. So rude. So rude. So rude. So rude. Uh, wasn't this where um, um, Marty did have to like pretty much dive up and climb up and, and rip away the push up bar mm-hmm. from Narita? Like, yeah. you know, we need to appreciate these refs. And JPW got Marty Asadi, who usually gets yeeted around himself, getting in there to. Defend Cobb. You got red. Oh, that was, that was the steel chair. That was the steel chair. He literally jumped on Narita's back. Yeah. There. Yeah. Like you got these great refs. I mean, remember Red Shoes using that part of the table as like a Captain America shield against evil. Yeah. <laughs> you got great refs over in NJPW. Mm. Um. I, I enjoyed how desperate Narita was. Because I believe at this point, Callum Newman is on commentary. Yeah, so night two, Callum Newman actually joined the commentary booth. And I thought, again, did a really good job. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, the banter he had with Walker back and forth was very, very good. Very, very good. Um, but I brought that up because uh, we saw Narita come out. And then we saw Narita take off. And I remember Callum going like, oh, I'm going for a jog there. Just piss off then. Okay. <laughs> coming up behind and jumping jo- uh, Jeff Cobb as he's coming out into the auditorium. Very, very smart. And again, as you said, all on his own. He's not relying on Dick Togo. He's not relying on Yoshinobu Kanemaru. He's he's doing silly shit on his own. Mm. What was the head movement for? Well, I, I actually thought it was show at first that was running up to attack him <laughs> from behind, but then I realized, oh, no, it's Narita. No, no, it was Narita. Yeah. Um, what I th- thought was great about that also is that it only momentarily dazed mm. Cobb before Cobb yeeted Narita into the chairs, which was great. Um, the only other thing that I thought was hilarious in this was the surfing, the... Is it the Hawaiian Massage Hawaii's, Club? The Aloha and uh, yeah, Hawaiian Massage Club, Aloha and Surf Club, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, doing all the hand signals and the thingy on the whatever. I love that. It was so funny. It was, and poor Narita just sitting there like having his back pelvis broken by the big man standing on him. I loved it. This was a really fun match. A little disappointed that Cobb didn't win, but mm. uh, I'm not going to be mad if Ren Narita challenges for the TV title. I think He's that'd be a great man. match. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, hundred percent. Hundred percent. So we're going to move. We're going to move on uh, to E L P L Phantasma versus Yota Suji. Again, really strong match with DC. Like. ELP really trying to come back in this tournament here. Like mm-hmm. He's already lost the first two. So you can see he's kind of having a, almost like kind of depressed here. And like, I loved Giotto throughout the match yelling to him and trying to help him and like mm-hmm. telling him what you could help, what to do next. And like, just playing the coach and mm-hmm. like really trying to fire his guy up. I thought it was just phenomenal for ELP to help mm-hmm. really build up this dude in this match. Uh, towards the end of this match, ELP jumps over to Gene Blaster attempt, hits sudden death super kick, then hits the CR2, the, can- the second Canadian Revolution. But he is delayed on getting the pin, and Yoda Suji kicks out at two. Uh, Suji ends up kicking ELP uh, when, he's goes- when he's up top. He goes up, but ELP knocks him back down to the mat. But Suji gets the knees up on Thunder Kiss. 86 goes for the small package, but you can see ELP shoved them back over a little bit. So ELP's on top for the small package. One, two, three. ELP gets the win. Let's go. Yeah. 
Yes, yes. It was nice to see him pick up a win. It sucks that it was against my pick mm -hmm. to win, but but it 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 makes me feel good. It makes me feel happy that that we're seeing this story because it's the one story that I think I'm really invested in in this G1 that I want to see that Cinderella ending mm -hmm. happen. Um I'm curious to see how it kind of plays off and plays out because like, like I said, you can hear like on the commentary the night before you know, he did great on commentary. Absolutely great. But you could hear him several times. He would get sad and he'd be like, I'm sad, sad man. Um, it has become a bit of a focal point, I think for the G1. Yeah. Um, the only thing I wanted to mention is that um, Suji working really smart in this one, really targeting the injured knee of ELP early on to try to capitalize on uh, taking that aerial kind of acrobatics away from ELP. As we could see, it didn't matter. He still got the win. Mm -hmm. yeah, really, I just noticed I... my lipstick right, matches the blue on the G1 logo. There you go. You could just... <laughs> the G1 princess herself. Cerulean blue. The G1 princess herself. Yes. <laughs> we move on to my pick of the show. Ooh. It is Hanare versus David Finley. Champion versus champion. Uh, so they're smashing each other early. Finley ends up like grabbing the belt, like Hanare's belt when he's on the floor. She spits on his stamps, and so Hanare chases him. They end up back in the ring. They're brawling. And they, when they get apart, Finley spits at Hanare, and then they continue to brawl, and Finley lariats them both over to the floor. Um, he starts running Hanare into the barricade, uh, hitting the English announce desk. But they're like, come mm -hmm. on, man! I love their reactions. Like, just getting mad at Finley. It was great. Then Finley comes well, over. Well, yeah, because Callum. Callum's on, uh, on, yeah. on, on commentary at this point, and he's kind of got beef with Finley as it is. Well, yeah, War Dog versus UE stuff here, right? Yeah, yeah. Didn't he spit on Callum? Uh, he flipped him off. Oh, I thought he, I thought he spit on him. No, I'm he, glad he flipped the, him off and he, didn't spit on him. He went for like a high five. Newman went like this to him to do like the UE thing, <laughs> and Finley just went at him like so. Yeah. Oh, many a meme has come out of David Finley flipping people off. So Finley literally picks up Hanari and tosses him into the ring post, like hit first. I was like, ow. Uh, then he like poses with his belt, calling himself a, the real champion. Uh, Finley smash like back in the ring later in the match, Finley smashing Hanari into the corner. But Hanari fires up and starts smashing his own head into the corner. But then Finley starts brawling with him more. But Hanari get comes back, gets him up on his shoulders with the Mah Mahari drop. Uh, Hanari, or the Samoan drop, whatever you want to call it. Uh, Hanari and Maori, Maori, that's it, Maori, the Maori <laughs> drop, but uh, or Samoan drop, whatever you want to call it. Uh, Hanari attacking in the corner, gets him on his shoulders, hits uh, the Wade Barrett wasteland where he just takes him on his shoulders and slams him in front of him, and then hits he, like you can see him like just slams him and he's like, like adjusts himself and then he hits the senton. I was like, ha ha. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, and he gets two. He falls over the PK and a Berserker Bomb for two. Uh, the great liver punch by Hanari in this. It looked great. Mm -hmm. um, they're trading elbows to the face at one point. Hanari hits a spin kick to the head, but Finley with, comes back with repeated rolling elbows. Gets a one count, then picks him up and hits him with just, just devastating-looking Dominator for two. Um, mm -hmm. The end of this match, though, Finley ends up ro uh, rolls... Uh, Hanari up on a Streets of Rage attempt for two. Then Hanari comes back with a huge headbutt. And then he comes running at Finley. Finley catches him, lifts him up for the suplex, and then, bang, overkill. And Finley picks up the win. Again, amazing match, as you had. Yes, yes. This was just, this was a all-out brawl at some points. These guys like each other. And I love it create some great intensity and some great intense matches um yeah i liked the um the work that finley was doing with uh, the championship you know baiting hanari into things baiting him outside you know working in callum at the ringside i really really enjoy what we're seeing david finley kind of evolving into where he went from being this like 
angry, pissy, um, kind of almost un directionless, we'll say, um, leader to begin with in, in the formation of the war dogs. And then we watched him really kind of quietly solidify the faction, seeing um, Drilla and Connors being the IWGP Junior Tag Team Champions, seeing Gabe Kidd and Alex Coughlin being tag champions as well. He himself was uh, never open champion for a little bit, wasn't he? I think so. I, I feel wrong. like he was, but it was like it wasn't what I would consider a whelming title mm. run. Um, mm. He's kind of been a little quiet, kind of see, sitting in the shadows for a little bit. And then this, this feud um, with Will Ospreay and, and John Moxley and the chasing of the global title and Nick Nemeth. This has kind of brought out the aggressive side of Finley again, which I'm kind of like really enjoying this kind of aggressive Finley because unlike the beginning of Finley as this war dog leader where he just didn't feel like he had any direction now he has a very clear definitive direction and he knows what way he's going and he knows how he's going to get there he's just going to plow through everybody and it's kind of working it's a strategy that's working really really well for him I'm excited about uh what the rest of the G1 is going to look like for him. Yeah, I'm excited to see what it looks like. Because, again, uh, Finley's someone I'm expecting. I, I I said he was in my top three uh, coming out of the B block. He, he's, like, I expect him to do really well in this block. And, mm -hmm. yeah, he's having a good, a nice tournament so far. So, mm -hmm. Agreed. Yeah. So we move on to the main event. And Melball's pick, it is you. Yeah, you remember Versus Kenosuke Takeshita. Uh, Did we so, ever think that I would have Yuya Uemura really in my pick? I said that last show. And I had, I had a Yuya Uemura pick in my show. Like, it, it's kind of right. crazy. Um, so Takeshita fights, uh, fighting back from Yuya Uemura early on in the match. Since, uh, but Yuya Uemura ends up sending Takeshita out, skins the cat back in, but Takeshita ends up Hit, kicking Yuri Murray as he's go or like punching Yuri Murray is going for a planche and he just like flops onto the floor. Um, so brutal. Sakesh takes him to the ramp and hits this like sick brain buster. It looked really good. Um, later in the match, Yuri Murray's bulldog is stopped, but Takeshita can't get the backdrop. Yuri Murray flips around and gets a backdrop suplex. Uh, Yuri Murray goes to the top, but gets cut off, and Takeshita hits a super. Stalling, like he gets him while well, standing on the top rope. He lifts Yurimura up while standing straight up on the top rope. Has Yurimura up the rope, and he's still standing on the top rope. Waits a couple seconds, then falls back into the ring. I'm like, oh my god. Uh, so I blame Suji yeah. for the, all that mess on the first night because obviously, it, well, no, it obviously wasn't his fault. So obviously Suji because he did a, did this great here with Yurimura. It's just beautiful superplex or Stalin superplex. They eventually get up. The Kesha sends him to the floor and hits a beautiful Tobek on Hilo. Uh, just, just picture perfect. Um, later in the match, huge strikes from both. The Kesha hits a boot and the poison round up at Yurimura right back with the German, but the Kesha right back with the Lariat. The Yurimura comes right back with a drop kick, and then both men are down. It's incredible, incredible sequence. And then the end of this match, Yurimura slams them at the uh, Kesha at center. This is a little bit later in the match. Uh, goes up to the top, hits the frog splash, only gets two. Yurimura lifts him into the dead bolt position, but gets reversed into a wheelbarrow suplex. Looked phenomenal. Uh, mm. Yurimura catches Takeshita into a backslide into the dead bolt position. This is where Takeshita's like, oh crap, I'm caught. And just starts throwing headbutts to the chest of Yurimura. Yurimura is not having anything of it. Runs him into the corner. Dead block, block, de de dead bolt suplex out with the bridge for the one, the two, and the three, and the win. Again, absolutely incredible main event. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And at that one, two, three, Takeshka's kick, still kicking. He just didn't have the force to kick out. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. 
This is not something that I thought I would say about Yuya Yuamura, but like I've always said that he does have this kind of traditional perfectionistic kind of tendency to him that tends to affect his speed. So because he's like, what I mean by that is because he's so focused on doing the move properly, he will slow down the move to a point where it doesn't always look good. That was not the case in this match. We had what I would consider one of the most picture-perfect matches I think I've ever seen in NJPW. There were no slips. There were no hiccups. There was no nothing. It was just a picture-perfect, strong-style match. Holy heckin' crap. Like, I knew Takeshka was that damn good. But to be able to pull it out of Yuya Yuamura, and in such an effortless way that it almost seemed like, hi, hello, it's always been there. This is the Yuya Yuamura I need to always see. Because we've seen certain people get into the ring with certain people in this G1, and they just give something to their opponent that makes the opponent better because of it. We've seen personality come out of Sonata. We've seen now charisma and just pure workmanship come out of Yuya Yuamura. I am so, so impressed with what these two were able to do. Like, goddamn. Goddamn. Mm-hmm. What a way to end the show. It was a perfect place in the in the match or in the uh, the show too, because there were so many like the 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 matches in this one flowed. There was a high and a low, and a high and a low, and this was a high end for this G1. Oh, frackety fracking good. If you're a Takeska fan, highly recommend checking out this match if you haven't already. Goddamn. So mm-hmm. good. Such a good match. Such a phenomenal yeah. match. So I'm going to quickly give you a point update for the B block. Alone in first place with six points. Is Yuya Yui Mura? Yeah. Who'd have, who'd have thought that? No. Uh, and then in second place with four points, you've got Hanari, Kanosuke Takesha, and Ren Narita. Then everyone else Jeff Cobb, Bolton Oleg, uh, Yoda Suji, El Fantasma, Hiroki Goto, and David Finley, all with two points. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, who would have thought that that's what the standings would be at this I, point? I, I, I know, not at all. This tournament has been hokey dokey. Mm-hmm. Doki chokey. Hokey dokey, okay, interesting. Okey dokey, doki chokey. But hokey dokey, okay. It's a, yeah, hokey. Hokey dokey chokey. Well, we have come to the end of another episode of NJPW Pudorous Review. Uh, you can find you me... both A and B block? Yeah. I only heard one. Oh, I, I, I updated A block when we finished the last oh, show. Oh, right, right before. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. No worries. No worries. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. So we've come to the end of another episode. Uh, you can find me on the X at that candidate guy, TikTok, Instagram, and threads at that candidate dude. You can also find me on Facebook at Andre and Melball Wrestling Talk. Or on our YouTube page, youtube.com so at Andre and Melball Wrestling Talk. You can also find me over in the comment section on BAM Weekly, which will have a new name fairly soon. And our audio will be going to their uh, podcast feed when that gets started in the next couple weeks or so we're going to be having that starting up soon uh and also you can find us over at twitch.tv slash our local establishment and youtube.com slash our at our local establishment we can find us every friday for the japanese wrestling update talking about all the rest goings on and professional wrestlings and all the things that we do and we talk about and all those fun little things um and then you can find me this wednesday over on OLE, as we have a special Marvel talk coming, talking about the uh, Marvel Hall H panel. Uh, we're going to talk about that and all the, the future of uh, Marvel and what Robert Downey Jr. is going to be doing in the MCU going forward. Lots and lots and lots to talk about, so check us out this Wednesday. 
And we'll be back with Ant because we delayed our show last week uh, from last Wednesday where I was supposed to do Ant Man, but I wasn't feeling well, so we didn't end up doing that. And that'll come in a couple of weeks. But yeah, we got our Hall H Marvel Talk special coming this Wednesday. I want to give also a big shout out to our boy Mike the Ref over Backbreaker video right up there for summer casting, all our stuff. Uh, if you want to see all his wrestling content, go to youtube.com slash at back at backbreaker video. If, if you want to see his live content, go to twitch.tv slash Mike the Ref. You can see him doing AW Watch Songs every Wednesday, Saturday, and pay per view Sunday. Uh, you can also find him uh, there pretty much every other day of the week playing video games and all that stuff. And if you want to really please with gaming content, go to youtube.com slash at Backbreaker underscore gaming. We can find content from him, Mr. PJC, this guy right here, Mr. Rick Jules, and therefore you go ahead and guest. Kayla J. Kayla J. Kayla J. Kayla J. We love Kayla J here. Yes, we do. Melba, where can we find you? If you're wanting to follow a Melba, you can follow her on the X thing at Collins Melba. You can follow her on everything else Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Mastodon, and Blue Sky at Mel Ball Collins. You can also find me on our local establishment programming, Japanese Reps Wrestling Update with this guy every Friday at 8 p.m. Mountain TI. Unless it's not. And we will let you know via social media. This week, we don't, I don't think we have anything going on. We do not have any wrestling going on in Edmonton this weekend. So we are going to be live at 8 p.m. And boy, howdy. Do we have a lot of ish to talk about? So make sure you stop by and throw in your comments and two cents about what's going on in the world of Japanese wrestling because we got it's extensive. Yep. Extensive. 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 You can also catch me on. No, it's extensive, not expansive. No, I said extensive. Extensive. You can also find me on Astrid Pizarro's YouTube channel where we do our show, Ladies Wrestling Showcase. We're going to try to get out an episode this week, which will also most likely come out on Friday before Japanese Wrestling Update. But we will announce that on social media, so stay tuned to hear when that is going on. Love that, Astrid. Love that, Natural. And congratulations to Astrid on getting her promotion at work. Yas. Love that girl. She's worked so hard. She gonna get more money. She gonna have more freedom. She's finally doing the things that she wants to do, and we couldn't be prouder of her over here at Andre Melville Wrestling Talk. Mm -hmm. If you're wanting to watch some New Japan wrestling, we will leave a link in the description box below. It is NJPWWorld.com. It is nine hundred and ninety nine yen. Twelve hundred and fifty yen. 1250 yen or approximately 10 Canadian, but no, it's actually more like 1450, 1450 Canadian. But we still like to shout out Sean Spears here because he's amazing. Um, it's still a great price to watch some amazing professional wrestling. <laughs> Immediate distraction. <laughs> Oh, it's still a great price to watch some amazing wrestling. And if you go there, you can watch all of the NJPW World TV title matches for free. So you can watch all of Zack Sabre Jr.'s impressive run last year. You can watch how Jeff Cobb was able to un uh, dethrone him. That's the right word. I was going to say unthrone him. That'd be a very odd thing to do. Um, yeah, all that and more. NJPWWorld.com. Andre, yep, my first friend and colleague. <laughs> Do you have anything else to say to the beautiful people? Do I? Do you? Do I? The beautiful people. The beautiful, beautiful people. Pe da -na -na. <laughs> I just want to say oh. thank you for tuning in here. We really do appreciate you joining us here. Uh, please uh, like the video, subscribe to the channel comment down below don't forget to share us out to all your friends family and those that are too hot to handle and don't forget to hit that notification bell so you can be alerted every time we drop a new video ding dong hello 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 <laughs> hello and that being said i am your mobile over there is andre we will see you next time
Adiós.